Hello everyone. Today I will be reading Great Uncle Ernest's letter dated March the 20th, 1917. Before I begin, I would like to show you this bag. A uh, bag like this would have been known as a cloth ditty bag. Uh, these types of bags had been sewn by women across Canada. They were volunteers with the Red Cross and were given to military personnel. Ernest would have used it to hold his personal or hygiene items. So items like soap or a razor or even his uh, letters and his envelopes. And so now I will begin. March the 20th, 1917, somewhere in France. Mrs. John F. Ferrier, Perth, Ontario. Dear father and mother and boys, I have just finished making some cocoa for myself and pretty good stuff it was too even without the milk, and it is a night that is not fit for anyone to go out in. I thought that I would write a letter home. The ground above was drying up splendidly, but the last couple of days have been decidedly disagreeable, and so things are in a bad state again, and tomorrow afternoon we go up again. Things are happening on all sides these times. The success of the past few weeks are great encouragement to everyone, and make the prospect of a happy return home more likely. To look at the sky on a fine evening back here at the billets reminds one of what we often saw on a summer evening in Canada after a hot day when you see the horizon light up by sheet lightning but hear no thunder. Sometimes the vibrations of the guns shake one, but there are times when it is only the flash of the guns that one notices. The horizon is generally lit up in places at night. Some of our lads have saw aeroplanes brought down at no great distance from where we have been working, but although I have seen them shelling them frequently, I have never had a good view of one falling, but we see them flying every fine day. I tell you that up among the trenches is a desolate looking piece of ground in places. Ugly looking stretches of barbed wire are the most conspicuous feature of the landscape when you get up near the front trenches. And then further back, the shell holes are very thick. New ones are constantly being added to the already plentiful supply of old ones, and they are all sizes. I think perhaps that there is some spring wheat sown already, but I am not sure. There are only about five weeks here. The plough was stopped, but there was other work done. There are a lot of wheat stacks over the country, and they keep sheep here in the village, and some of the lambs are pretty nice, and a couple of months old, but the sheep are the most mongrel looking I have ever saw. An old shepherd takes them out every day, and it is interesting to see the way his dogs keep them together while passing our camp. Well, I suppose you get the war news as soon as myself, so I think I will close soon. But do you know it is nearly three weeks since I got a letter from you or Mrs. Andrews? But hoping this finds you well, I remain your loving son and brother, Ernest. Next week I will read his letter dated March the 23rd, 1917. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.